In chapter five of Foucault's Pendulum, there's a snippet of some computer code. It's written in a language called BASIC, which stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. The, the language BASIC is now considered a dead language, but it, it actually has an element of nostalgia for me. I remember when I was in high school, I think also in middle school, I used to program on the TI-83 calculator in BASIC. I would make like simple games like Snake and Tetris and things like that. The first question that comes to mind, I was actually asked this question um, in a comment on a previous video, is, is the code correct? So by correct, I guess we mean like, does the code do what the author, Umberto Eco, thinks it does? So that answer to that question actually depends on what version uh, of the book you're, you're holding. So I have, I have two versions here. Um, in the earlier version, the 1989 translation, the code has a bunch of interesting mistakes in it, so it's not exactly correct. However, in my uh, 1990 Picador version, the code is corrected, and so it will run as the author intended it to run. Interestingly, when I was online searching uh, for different versions, I, I found an intermediate version, so I think there's a third version uh, as well. And so if you're curious whether or not your version is correct, uh, to, to the extent that it looks like the version on the right, it is correct. And to the extent that it doesn't look like the version on the right, it looks more like the version on the left, uh, the code is incorrect. So I, you don't really know if code is correct until you run it. I mean, reading the code can only get you so far. And computer languages uh, evolve very dramatically. So it was not trivial to find a compiler or an interpreter that can run this basic code. But after a lot of experimenting with many different tools, I was actually able to find some website that could run this code. And so you can see that now. Before we look at what exactly this code is doing and what it means, I want to just take a step back. Foucault's Pendulum deals with themes of communication, themes of symbols, themes of interpretation and codes. The computer programmer is writing a series of instructions. The instructions are written for a computer, a computer which is going to interpret those instructions. But there are two other people that are party to this process. Human beings don't only write code for computers. What's hard about computer programming is writing code that human beings can read. There's a famous quote in computer programming. There are only two hard things in computer science, cache invalidation and naming things. And so cache invalidation is the problem of like when you're storing data and you have like a local storage system so that you don't have to constantly check a database or constantly make uh, a, a, do a complex lookup or a difficult calculation. And you need to know when to invalidate the cache. You need to know when your data is stale. Um, and that's like a really hard problem in computer science. And the other hard problem is, of course, naming things. Because whenever you write code, you're dealing with all sorts of intermediate steps, intermediate computations, variables. Variables in computer programming are, play sort of like a similar role to what like files on your computer play, except they're a lot more numerous. They're a lot more ephemeral and fleeting. And so there's many, many, many things you have to name. And to the computer's perspective, to the interpreter to the computer chip that's going to run these instructions, the name is irrelevant. It, it doesn't care uh, about how you name it. But computer programming is not just about writing for a computer. You're writing for the future version of yourself. You're writing for other people who are going to be reading this code in the future. To get to any level of complexity, code has to be understandable to human beings and has to be able to evolve and change and grow over time. And so the difficulty of naming things um, is one of the, the central elements of writing computer code. And the future version of yourself or the other programmers that are going to be looking at this code in the future are part of the process of writing code. And that's one of the things that separates a more novice from a more expert programmer is their ability to write code which is readable to human beings, not just computers. The other person who's a part of this process is the user. So the programmer is writing a code which is going to be 
interpreted, meant to be readable to a human being and to a computer. And the code encodes instructions which are relevant to an interaction between a future user of the program and the computer itself. So this is a diagram that captures sort of this complex web of communication. And I think is an example of the kind of webs. For example, the spherot web, which defines the structure of the book that Echo is playing with and is fascinated with throughout the text. So what does a computer programmer see when they look at this block of code? So firstly, it's interesting to note that this problem of permuting a string is like one of these basic foundational problems in computer science. It's an example of a problem which feels simple, but there's like a ton of depth to it. And so the approach taken in this book is very close to the most naive approach that I think any computer programmer would, would come up with on a first try approach, except for one line, which is line 100, which is actually a really nice insight. The main virtue of this solution over other solutions is its brevity. So the things that jump out at me are the insight of line 100, which says that you're able to resolve the fourth index of the newly permuted string by from the three previous indices. That is very slick. Another thing that jumps out is it seems unrealistic that a computer programmer who's iterating on a quick solution for permuting the strings would ask for user input. Because whenever you're writing a snippet of code like this, you, you make a change and you test. You make a change and you test. And you want to be able to iterate on that process as fast as possible. And the last thing you want to do is to make a change and then actually have to type in letters. And so in this computer, in this particular program, whenever the program runs, it asks the user to input four letters to permute. Whereas uh, a much simpler approach from the perspective of rapid development would be to just hard code the, the letters that you want to permute. So what does this code do? Let's look at it carefully. So on line 10, we have an REM command, which I believe stands for remove. And what you're doing is you're, you're actually removing the instruction. Because these instructions are going to be passed on to a processor, or a central processing unit and in, in machine code. And you're saying that line 10 is not an instruction. Remove it from the instruction set. So what is it? It's what we call a comment, meaning it's code, it's, it's text, which is for a human reader as opposed to a computer. And so that is the name of the program, anagrams. And then we have this input command, which is an instruction that tells the computer to ask the user of the program to input four different letters. And these four letters are stored in four different variables. And so if you, you use an analogy, a rough analogy, for sort of thinking about what a variable is, uh, a, 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 a human user of a computer traffics in files. They create files, they delete files, they modify files, they copy files. So the computer that's going to be instrumenting this program and following these instructions here traffics in variables. They're like, they're basically just units of data, but they have uh, a type associated with them and they have a name associated with them just like we do with files. So we have four variables which correspond to four letters that the user inputs into the program. Line 30 means print a new line. And now lines 40 through 90 Lines 40 through 70 are three loops. We initialize three index variables, and each of these variables are independently incremented between the values 1 to 4. So every variable can be either 1, 2, 3, or 4, and will be each of those values. If any of those indices collide, meaning if ever you have um, if, I, if I1, I2, or I3 is the same as either I1, I2, or I3. We skip that configuration. And then on 100, on line 100, we compute I4, which is the fourth index from the other three indices. And then on line 110, we use those indices to arrange the four letters that were inputted by the user on line 20. And so in that sense, the code is correct. But there's another sense 
that as a programmer, the, the, code, the code seems glaringly incorrect. And that is the fact that it doesn't take into account that when you permute a string, if any letters are the same, you're going to have much less unique permutations of that string. And so for example, in the most simple case, if you're permuting a string, which is just four letters, and all the letters are the same, so instead of the name of God, which is YHVH, you just were to have AAAA, the four letters A, there's really only one meaningful permutation, which is AAAA. There's no, there's no sense in which swapping the A's is meaningful. And we see that on uh, page 38 of uh, the uh, Picador version, when he permutes the six letter name of God, and you get two pages of permutations, and many of these permutations are identical. And so, perhaps for, for the purposes of the plot, it doesn't, it doesn't matter one way or the other. But from the perspective of like the psychology of trying to solve a tight little elegant computer science problem, there, there seems to be a, a bias uh, among many programmers for like the, the neatest solution with the most economy and the least amount of waste. And this, this solution presented here seems a little bit imprecise.